This product must be installed by a qualified person in accordance with the installation handbook and with the National Electric Code or Canadian Electric Code Part 1 as applicable. All electric connections must be made by a qualified electrician, according to the electrical and building codes effective in your region. The dedicated circuit for the heating cable has been turned off. In this application, we will use the DetraHeat ERT thermostat mounted on a double-gang electrical box with a single-gang mud ring. The following electrical preparation was completed previously. Conduit was run from the electrical box to the base of the wall to protect the heating cable cold lead. The floor temperature sensors were run inside the wall cavity and attached to the stud using clips. The sensors were then threaded between the electrical box and surrounding wall sheathing. Further information regarding electrical preparation for the DetraHeat ERSD thermostat can be found in the Project Planning and Preparation segment of this video series. Each heating cable is subject to factory quality control. However, damage to the cables may happen after the product leaves the factory. In order to ensure that the heating cable quality remains unchanged throughout the installation process, a series of tests are conducted before cable installation, after cable installation, and after tile installation. Measurements are compared with factory values and recorded in the heating cable tests log. The owner must submit a copy of the completed tests log with the warranty registration card to Schluter Systems and retain the log for warranty purposes. The first series of tests is performed before removing the cable from the spool. If a break or damage is detected during the tests, return the heating cable to the original place of purchase. Test 1 is to check the heating cable conductor resistance. This test is required for warranty coverage. Connect an ohm meter or multimeter to the heating cable power leads to determine the conductor resistance. Verify that the measured resistance is within 10% of the factory resistance value printed on the spool. Record the factory value and reading in the log. Test 2 is to check for continuity between the heating cable conductor and ground braid. This test is also required for warranty coverage. Connect an ohm meter or multimeter to one of the heating cable power leads and the ground braid. In a successful test, the meter will display an I for infinity or OL for overload. This means the conductor is not touching the ground braid. Record the reading in the log. Test 3 is to check the heating cable conductor insulation. This test is not required but is recommended. If it is completed and submitted with the tests log, the owner will receive an extended heating cable warranty. The insulation resistance test is performed to make sure there are no small breaks in the cable insulation, which may not be detected during the continuity test. Even small breaks can cause current leakage to ground, which would cause the GFCI to disable the floor heating system. Connect a megohm meter set to 1000 volts to one of the heating cable power leads and the ground braid. The resistance measurement must be greater than 1 gigaohm or 1000 megaohms. Record the reading in the log. If the heating cable passes all three tests, it can be installed in the DetraHeat or DetraHeat TB membrane. These tests will be repeated to verify the cable is not damaged during the installation process. Test the floor temperature sensors using an ohm meter or multimeter to verify accuracy. The resistance will vary according to the ambient temperature. This test is required for warranty coverage. Connect the meter to the sensor leads and compare the measurement with the expected values in the heating cable tests log. Record the actual temperature and measured resistances in the tests log. Thread the heating cable cold lead through the conduit from the base of the wall to the thermostat electrical box. Mark where the cold lead to conductor splice will be placed. Install the splice at least 3 inches from the wall to limit risk of damage if baseboard is installed. Cut the membrane and insert the splice. 
It may be necessary to temporarily secure the splice to the floor with thin set mortar or other adhesive, such as curdy fix or hot glue. Embed the heating cables between studs, making sure to leave space for the floor temperature sensors near the thermostat. A wood float can be used to help speed up the process, but use care not to damage the cable. For both 120 and 240 volt applications, the required spacing between cable runs is three studs or three and one half inches. Narrower spacing may result in overheating and damage to building structures. Wider spacing may not provide sufficient power to warm the floor to the desired temperature. Please refer to the Dietra Heat Installation Handbook for required spacing for 208 volt applications. A roller may also be useful to embed the cables in the matting. In this application, we split the floor into two areas to limit the longest single run of heating cable to 10 feet as required. Alternatively, the heating cable can be turned or a U-shaped jog created at 10-foot runs. The heating cable may not touch or cross itself or another heating cable. If you get stuck, simply remove and reapply the cable in a different pattern. Continue heating cable installation, maintaining the required spacing between the cable and fixture locations marked on the floor. The heating cable must not be modified in any way or cut to fit the space. This would change the cable resistance and could lead to a fire. Verify that the heating cable is embedded between studs and the membrane throughout its length. The heating cable installation is now complete. Repeat the three heating cable tests to verify the cable was not damaged during installation. In thin bed tile applications, the floor temperature sensor is installed within the tile bond coat. In the event of damage or defect, the sensor could only be replaced by removing tiles. To mitigate this risk, two sensors are supplied, one with the thermostat and one with the heating cable. Both sensors are installed, while only one is connected to the thermostat. In this case, if the first sensor is damaged, then the second sensor can be easily connected to the thermostat without removing tiles. Install the thermostat sensors between two cable runs, at least 24 inches from the wall. Mark the sensor locations on the Dietra heat matting. Temporarily remove the heating cable from the area and cut the matting to accommodate the sensors. Replace the heating cable once the cutting is complete. Place the floor temperature sensors where the matting has been cut. It may be necessary to temporarily secure the sensors to the floor with thin set mortar or another adhesive, such as curdy fix or hot glue. Embed the sensor wires in the matting without overlapping or crossing the heating cable. Fasten a metal protection plate at the base of the wall to help prevent damage to the cables if a baseboard will be installed. The installation of the heating cable and floor temperature sensors is now complete.